Good morning, everyone, or I guess at this point, we should probably say good afternoon, depending upon where you're from. Um, welcome to rainy Arizona today. Um, we're actually uh, being able to present this webinar out of nice, cool, wet Payson, Arizona today. So we're, uh, we're fortunate to be with all of you from here. Um, apologize, we're just a couple minutes, I think we're a couple minutes late getting on working out some of the technical issues here. Um, but we appreciate you being with us. Um, we're uh, looking forward to visiting today for just a little bit um, on David versus Goliath. How do we compete with the big boys in the market um, and yet still continue to keep our identity as small businesses? And so um, like so we've got four of you, actually three of you here with us so far. Um, I know we've got uh, a few more registered, so hopefully they will pop in here with us in just a few minutes. So, so a couple of housekeeping things real quickly. Um, we do have everybody muted um, at this point. Um, as we uh, go through this, if you have any questions, put those down into the chat area. Um, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be monitoring those um, as, we, uh, as we go through today. If you have any questions, I'm happy to try and address those as they come up. Um, we want, to, uh, we want to make sure that we uh, uh, tackle those. If it's something that we'll address later on in the webinar, we'll get to those um, at that point. Um, but we really want to make sure that we, we tackle everybody's questions as part of that. Today is being recorded. Uh, we will be sending you a link to this probably, uh, it may be early next week. Uh, we'll be sending that out to you as soon as that process is through our system. We will get that put together and send a link to this. So you'll have access to, to reviewing this Again, we'll also be uploading this up to our YouTube channel uh, with the rest of our seminars that we've done previously. Um, if the information you find uh, is helpful, you may want to go check out our YouTube channel um, at Eastern Arizona College or EACSBDC and check out our other uh, webinars that we've done there over the last few months. So well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, of course, we're, uh, as always, we, we like to go through and talk a little bit about who the SBDC is. Uh, some of you may be clients of SBDC. Some of you um, may uh, have never heard of SBDC, but somebody wanted to um, uh, wanted you to put to participate in this. Uh, lots of lots of different reasons why why you may be here, but we want to we do want to go through and kind of introduce ourselves a little bit, uh, just so you have a better idea of who we are. So we are we are we are not the SBA, but we are funded through by a grant through the U.S. Small Business Administration and our host institution, which is Eastern Arizona College, um, by being funded by both of those through both the grant and through our host institution, this allows us to be able to provide you no cost one-on-one -on -one counseling. Uh, for those who may be in business, those who may be thinking about opening their own business, um, we also are able to offer these types of classes, no cost or low cost classes, seminars, um, that are here to help educate you, to bring more information to you, to help you either in your business uh, startup process, whether you are in business and are trying to find ways of how can I improve that? How can I tackle some of the pain points? How can I resol resolve some of those um, as part of my business? That's what we love to do is to try and bring you as much information as possible, not to run your business, but to help you figure out how can we improve business uh, through some small and simple changes within that within that uh, within that business. Now here in Arizona, we are part um, of ten other centers here statewide. Um, I tell you that because we don't necessarily, as a center, may not have all the answers that you're looking for, but we do have fifty other people in our network who may have expertise in that area, and we believe in um, we believe in resource sharing and co-counseling. And if there is an expert in our network who may be able to help us provide you better service, we want to try and bring them in as part of that uh, to help your business in whatever way that we can. Now, I mentioned that we are statewide. We are also nationwide, um, over 1,100 centers around the nation, over 4,500 full-time counselors. Um, last year, we actually provided counseling for over three quarters of a million clients nationwide. Um, through that. So we, we have a very strong organization. We have a lot of people who move from state to state and, and are worried about still finding those resources in another location. We do have these resources wherever you may be working at. As I mentioned, we do have 10 other centers, uh, main centers that we work out of, but we do have 26 different locations throughout the state. 
We also have six locations which are called PTAC locations. PTAC stands for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Um, that is a sister organization of ours that focuses on uh, government contracting. So if you have a business that uh, may have an opportunity to contract with the federal government, their job is to help you uh, or help provide you the assistance needed to navigate through those processes very easily. Um, in fact, yesterday I received a, an, an email from one of our PTAC counselors who know that we, uh, that, we, that we cover a number of different areas and said, Kevin, we just saw this alert that popped up for the Payson area. Um, if any of your clients or if you know of any businesses that might be interested in this, this is open, this is a bid open for seven days. Let us know what, if you find somebody that might be interested in this. So um, I've now reached out to a couple of businesses to provide them a potentially a federal contract opportunity that they might not have ever known that uh, would have been available to them. So they're a, a wonderful, wonderful sister organization of ours that we really, really enjoy working with. We have another organization that we've just started working with or have just created a new partnership with. We're coming up on our first full year and that is the Arizona Commerce Authority. The Arizona Commerce Authority is the leading economic development organization here in Arizona. Um, they are, basically their mission is to grow our economy. Um, they work on recruiting, uh, recruiting out-of-state companies to expand here in Arizona. Their work with existing companies to help them grow. And ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to help create new jobs and businesses here within the state of Arizona. Um, they have a number of programs that um, uh, we're, we're working diligently to get out uh, more into our rural areas uh, to provide those opportunities with them. Um, if you have any interest or if you think that you might uh, like to gather some more information about the ACA, please let us know and we'd be happy to get that information to you to get you into the uh, into the processes of working with them. So we're super happy to have them on board with us and have enjoyed a great year and looking forward to a few more years of what we're going to be doing with them. So, all right, so that's enough about us. Let's talk about why we're here today. Isn't this why we're here? Why uh, does it seem like, especially in more of our rural areas, that we continue to fight the battle against these major discount stores? The battle continues on. Um, it will, and it, it's, again, it's going to continue. We don't, we don't see any, any hope in the future that Walmart's going to move out or that uh, Costco is going to start to cut back on its operations. Um, but we, we, we have these types of stores, and we see more and more of them. It seems like moving more into our rural areas, and it makes it very difficult for smaller businesses to try and compete with them. Not only are we dealing with, with, uh, with discount stores. We're also dealing with the big box stores. Uh, we're dealing with Home Depot. Uh, we're dealing with Staples. Uh, some of the larger box stores that are kind of a come in, we feel everything that competes with us, um, sometimes directly, sometimes that's going to be indirectly. But the, boom, but the boxes continue to move in and they, and they continue to fight against us and they continue to siphon more and more business away from our small businesses. The big one that we're gonna talk a little bit about today and we fight about it over and over and over again, is Amazon. And the amount of, of business that Amazon is taking away from us as individual small businesses. It's, Amazon is making it so easy for people to, to order from them. If you think about it, they now have one click shopping. Find what you want, click on it, and it's, and it's, and it's done and being shipped to you immediately. Um, in some areas, in our metropolitan areas, they have same day shipping. I mean, I'm sorry, same day delivery. If you're close enough, we have drone deliveries that we, that I don't know if they've got in place now, but I know has been talked about. Um, we can order while we're laying in our beds and we have our, 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 uh, our, our echo, uh, our sitting on the drawer next to us. And we can say, Hey, I'm, I'm out of AAA batteries. Uh, Amazon or uh, Alexa, order me, some new AAA batteries, and Alexa takes care of it for you. It's just becoming so pervasive and so easy to order from them that it's making it extremely difficult for us to continue to uh, compete. It's, con it's making it more and more difficult for us to 
uh, to continue to be profitable in our business. Um, and so what we're going to talk about today is what are some things that we need to look forward to? What are some ways that Amazon will never be able to compete with us? What are some ways that Walmart will never be able to, to, to take us on head to head? And how can we separate ourselves and establish ourselves even in the midst of Amazon online shopping, um, box stores, mega stores, people traveling out of town and going to the metropolitan areas rather than shopping in our, in our, small, in our small town stores. How do we keep them here? How do we keep them with us? Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of points of good news first, and then we're gonna get into talking about what these 10 points are. The first thing is millennials. Millennials are rock stars. We love millennials. Some of you might be thinking, hey, wait a second here. We're not quite so sure about these millennials that are coming up. There's a lot of negative press about them. There's a lot of exciting, exciting things for them about them as well. I'm going to share you a, a few facts for with you about millennials that I want you to help to, to understand and why we get so excited about millennials and their purchasing power. Millennials like shopping local. They like to find things that are niche. They like to find things that are different than what they can buy on Amazon or what they can buy at Walmart or what they can buy at Target. They like to find those differing opportunities for them. 40% of them prefer local even if the cost is higher. Price is not a big deal with them. If they want it, they're going to buy it. If it sets them apart, even if the price is higher, they liked, they like having that connection with their local businesses. And this last part is really interesting to me. 37% of them distrust big business. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it's just, again, the generation that they're, that they're growing up and being a part of, if it's part of that generational uh, characteristic that they have, but they are just not big fans of big business. Um, now, are they heavy duty Amazon shoppers? They absolutely are. Are they, are they, have they grown up in an area, in an era of not knowing anything different than having smartphones, being able to purchase and buy things directly as spur of the moment purchases? Um, are they used to finding things very quickly and easily? Absolutely they do, but they're not big fans of big business. The second point of good news I wanna share with you is the buy local movement. The buy local movement continues to grow and continues to become more and more widespread. Many of you may have participated in the Small Business Saturday, uh, which occurs on Saturday after Thanksgiving. So we have Thanksgiving, we have Black, I don't know if they call it Black Thursday, we call it Black Friday. Um, I wish they'd shift everything over to Friday and let's leave Thursday for what it is. But the buy local movement is gaining more and more traction in our communities. The numbers continue to go up as we track those now as part of Small Business Saturday. The numbers over the last, I believe it's nine years now that we've been participating in Small Business Saturday on that Saturday after Thanksgiving, the numbers continue to grow year after year after year. People are starting to recognize and understanding the importance of spending those dollars locally. Um, numbers of organizations are now promoting that more and more. We're starting to see more and more people understanding the impact of those dollars staying local and the importance that it has on their, on their local organizations, their little league teams, their, their, their sports booster clubs, their whatever they may be doing. Um, they're finding, and again, starting to recognize and understand that the more dollars that they spend locally returns back to them in much greater numbers and much greater and much higher dollar values than what buying from large organizations or from buying out of town will ever do from them. So that's the good news, all right? That's the, that's, that's the great news that I want you to know that it's not all doom and gloom. There are some great things on the horizon. We're seeing some great things happen. Now, how do we take advantage of these? We're gonna go through 10 different, 10 different ways that you can set yourself apart from big box on how you can compete with big box and big box. I don't think is going to want to jump into some of these pulls with you because they can't, 
compete with you in those ways. The first thing is, is I want you to start to connect with your customer more. One of the great benefits of being a small business is the closer connection that you have with your target customer, with your target market, that the big boxes and big business will never be able to have. Our consumers today, and we're again, we're just as I, uh, talking about our millennials, our consumers today like businesses that engage with them. They like businesses that are going to engage with them on social media, that are going to engage with them in local activities. They're going to engage with them on community issues, on, 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 on social causes, whatever those may be. And they like connecting with them in this new, so I say new, social media has been around now for how long? I think I got my, my 11 year anniversary the other day for being on Facebook. So anyway, and I was, and I was a late adopter, I guess, if I, for, for Facebook, I guess, just my, just my generation. But consumers like to connect and like to engage with businesses, especially on social media. But it becomes more meaningful to them when it's the owner of the company that is the one writing the blog posts, the one who's responding to the reviews, or the one who's commenting back on social media posts that they may be putting on there. Maybe it's the review that you left, where maybe you left something that, something that they could do better. It's that connection that the big boxes will never, or the, the large businesses will never be able to do as well as you do on yours. By engaging with your target customer better, by engaging with them in whatever way that that is and working with them directly, it's going to help you to discover some new needs and services that they're looking for much faster and much quicker than what big businesses can. There are processes and protocols and procedures in place for large customers that they cannot respond to quite as quickly as what you can. Now I've got some interesting numbers I want you to take a look at here. Emotionally engaged customers are 300% more likely to recommend you. They are 300% more likely to become a, re a repeat customer. 300% more, li more likely to come back in your store. And these are the two numbers that I really, the, the 300% are great, but they are 44% less likely to shop somewhere else. And 33% of them, price doesn't matter. They're willing to pay more money by coming to you rather than going somewhere else. Now, I want you to think about your own shopping habits. Do you shop at certain locations regardless of where they, um, regardless of where they may be located, regardless of what the pricing may be? Um, The, the opportunities, because of these numbers right here, give you so much more flexibility um, to be able to communicate and to connect with your customers more so than the big boxes. And these are the numbers that tell us that that's, that, that, that that's exactly what's happening here. All right. So engage with your customers, connect with your audience, find out who they are and and find ways of being able to connect with them in better ways all right let's go to the next one avoid at all cost any price wars we typically see people wanting to uh, uh engage in price wars when they want to increase their market share which usually means taking a share from their competitors so they're wanting th now 30 percent of the of the market share rather than 25%. So now they start to get into a price battle. Um, you start reducing your prices, more people now come to you. And now you, now you know your market price goes up. But now what happens once we've got the price dropped to a certain point? At some point, we're gonna have to bring those prices back or we're gonna have to start to find lower quality or lower priced products for us to be able to continue to maintain those prices. There are, there are, are businesses in, in, in my community that have developed a reputation that there is always a sale going on in their business. 
and I've heard it said that, and, and, I've, and I've, I've said, I've, I've heard it said, I've heard members of my family say, I went in and found the pants that I want, but I'm not going to buy them today because I know that next week they're going to be on sale. And they've been conditioned to know that at some point they're going to be able to get those at a cheaper price than what are on the rack today. So be careful when you are, um, when you're dealing with price, but especially stay away from price wars and people trying to compete with you strictly on price. A couple things I want you to do. Number one, continue to provide value to your customer. Let them know that it's not just about price, but that with the price comes value, that with the price comes quality. Establish yourself in that way. And then keep a close watch on that pricing, all right? Make sure we're not dipping down in order to get into a price war. We have times where we need to get rid of some inventory. We have some times when we need to move some things off of our shelves, but let's do those not necessarily in response to that. I will tell you a couple of things I, that I don't want you to do. Don't get into a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle with the giant. Let Goliath do their pricing. You will never ever win a price war with Walmart. You'll never win a price war with Amazon. So continue to maintain that value, continue to continue, continue to maintain that quality that's there. Also, the other thing I want you to avoid is do not think that you're going to be able to outlast the competition. At some point, the cash flow is going to be impacted. At some point, your, your ability to maintain a profit and to sustain the profitability of your business is going to suffer significantly. And at some point, you're going to run out of cash before Jeff Bezos does. I hate to break it to you, but I think Jeff's got a few more bucks in his, in his, in his wallet than what we might have. Um, so don't think you're going to be able to out, outlast Amazon or the Walton family um, on, these, on these price wars. Continue to maintain, but continue to show what the value is of that product as part of that. A couple of other things I want you to consider as part of this. Do your customers even know that a competitor has dropped their pricing? There are many times your customers don't even know the price of your competitor's products. Because why? Because they want to continue to shop with you. For, remember, 44% of them are not going to go anywhere else. So why are we responding to a, to a price war when our customers don't even go there? Continue to recognize and understand that we can keep our prices where they are and not have any impact on that. Only respond if you think that your customers may know. And even then, we need to continue to watch those numbers. The other thing we need to think about, too, is why did they do it? Is it strictly for, um, is it, are, they, are they just trying to get rid of inventory? Are they doing what you might have to do? Are they trying to, um, are they, again, trying to get rid of inventory? Is this a, 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 an, an end of season sale? Is this a, uh, we're going out of business sale? If they're going out of business, by all means, do not start discounting your prices. Let them go out of business. We may lose some sales in the short term, but we're going to be more stable in the long term, and we'll bounce right back from that with no problem. Um, their, their costs might have gone up. They may have gone up temporarily. Um, maybe the prices have dipped temporarily, and they, have, they can still maintain those margins. So again, try to figure out why they're getting into that battle. Um, before you start dropping those prices, if indeed we need to get into those types of scenarios. But again, the counsel is avoid the price war wherever possible. The next thing is, is I want you to be unique. All right. I want you to focus on what sets you apart from everybody else. There are a lot of things that you can offer your customers that the big businesses can't. Service, knowledge, response times. You offer many, many things that they either don't want to try and offer or that they can't offer. I'm going to give you an example. Last Saturday, my wife says, hey, I need to get some new shorts. So we went to a, a, a local small business near us and they had shorts there. And we walk in and she picks out the shorts in the size that she typically wears. And she goes to the waiting room and I go over, they have a man couch over in the corner because where else are, what else are men going to do in a women's clothing store? So I go to the man couch. 
And I hear the owner come across the store and ask my wife what size that she got. And my wife told her, and the owner said, you know what? That short that you just took in there runs just a touch big. Let me go grab a different size short for you that I think is going to fit a little bit better. Went back over to the same rack, grabbed the short that she felt would, would fit her better, brought it back to her, handed it over the top, and sure enough, the original size that my wife thought she was going to need did run a little bit big. That owner knew her product. Needless to say, I walked out of there with a pair of shorts, um, a new top that she wanted to go with the shorts, and two new necklaces. Um, so the shorts we went in that were that I thought was going to get out of there fairly er, fairly easily, I probably dropped probably two and a half times more money in that store, um, mainly because the owner became involved in that. When was the last time you went to a big box store and had a, 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 a worker there be knowledgeable about the individual products and then be willing to go get the product for you to bring it back to you to help you find exactly what you need? I, it's just one of those ways that you can set yourself apart and again, continue to create that value. We will always go back to this place to purchase clothes. Well, my wife will, but we will continue to go back there regularly because of the service that's there and the value of the product. Now, a couple things that I don't want you to do. Don't assume that because you are unique that everybody knows about it. Don't just think, oh, well, we're different. And then everybody's going to come rushing to your door. Invite people to leave reviews. Invite people to share their experiences. Invite people to let others know exactly what's going on inside your store and how you differentiate from everybody else. And then also don't be afraid to flaunt that. Talk about it in your, on your social media posts. Talk about it in your, in your advertising. Share the things that set you apart from the big box. Again, we're trying to find ways where we can make that connection with our audience. Now, the next thing, and this kind of falls right along in that same line, is I want you to find your niche. I want you to find where you fit inside this market. Now, most big business is focused on trying to reach a very broad range of demographics. They're trying to get the most product out, the, the most service out for the most people, and they're not really finding a specialty area for, their, for what they're doing because they just have too much. As a small business, you have the opportunity to be able to reach specific markets much more effectively than what the big boxes can. They're making purchases and they're making investments based upon national or regional sales trends. However, you're the local. You're the, you're the small business on Main Street USA. You have the advantage of knowing exactly what your local customer wants more. Amazon may think they know. Walmart may have an idea of what you might know. Home Depot thinks that this is what you're going to be wanting this upcoming season. But your customers are coming in your door and they're telling you exactly what they want and what they need. And you can respond and take advantage of that much quicker and meet those needs much better than what the large boxes are ever going to be able to do. All right, let's go to our next one. Building your reputation. You cannot build a reputation on what you're going to do. Your reputation is everything as it relates to your business. So being a big business doesn't necessarily mean being seen as big. There's a lot of, of just because they're big doesn't mean they have a great reputation. There are a lot of large corporations out there who have a pretty mediocre presence across the nation. There's also a lot of small businesses that are out there that have a huge name in their community. If you're a small business that has a well-earned reputation in your area and you receive daily praise in person by its customers is much more rewarding than a larger business that does not enjoy those benefits. 
share that. Invite, again, your customers to leave reviews, to share their experiences, to invite others. What you do says way more than what you say you're going to do. Build your reputation. Help people to know where they need to go. The great thing about this is when your reputation is great, you don't have to, say, you don't have to, to promote yourself to the degree that you think you do, your customers do. How many times have you been on Facebook or have you been on some form of social media and somebody says, I'm looking for a recommendation for an exterminator, a mechanic, a restaurant, a clothing store, a babysitter. And how many people then start to flood that person with recommendations of who they have used and the reputation that that person has. Build the reputation. It is what is going to speak volumes and will resonate and will become viral in a way that your advertising will never, never be able to touch. All right, let's go to the next one. Know your competition. Now, I love this picture because it reminds me of my grandson who is just learning how to play rock, paper, scissors. And he always throws paper and he always says he's going to win. So I can throw, I can throw paper, he wins. I can throw scissors, he wins. So I'm trying to teach him that when I throw rock, that's when he wins. So needless to say, I throw rock a lot. So I want you to know your competition. Why do I want you to know your competition? Because I need you to know what are they doing? How are they competing? Are, do they always throw rock first? Do they always throw paper first? Valid competition is going to make you better. They're going to push you to have to know what you're doing better and how to differentiate yourself from what they're doing. So there's a couple of things that I want you to do. Number one, spy. I want you to go learn what you can about your, about your competitors, especially the big box. Go walk through their store. Go find out what, is, what they're offering. Go, go take a look at their pricing. It's not a secret. Go find out everything that you can. When I first opened up my, my, my first business, um, I went for some training from the, from the company that was one of our suppliers. And the first thing that they did on the first day was they says, okay, we want you to go to all of our competitors in the area. I, was, I had never been in that area. They didn't know me. And they said, we want you to go to all of these competitors that are out there. And we want you to be like a, like a secret shopper. We want you to go in. We want you to ask questions. We want you to, to visit with them and, and, and find out what are their selling points? What are they promoting? All of those kinds of things. Because they wanted me to understand what, is, what are my competitors talking about out there in the market? It made me a better business owner because I was able to speak now knowledgeably about what my competitors were offering in the market. So go out, do some spying, um, do your research. Find out what others are doing. Find out what, what are some new things that they may be trying to do and find out why. Ask some questions. Uh, talk to people that on the floor. Talk, to, talk to, to, to workers, to staff. I'm not saying you need to drill them on what their cost of goods are or any of those kinds of things. But find out what they're doing and, and what are some of the things that they're trying to, trying to implement as part of that. Now, there's a couple of don'ts that I want you to do as part of this as well. Don't go make an enemy as part of this. I don't want you to go in and now start creating uh, chaos in their business as part of this. I just want you to go and learn. We're not there to badmouth the business. We're not there to, to try and drag them down. We're not there. We're not even there to try and steal their business and to try and take away customers. We're just there to learn. So don't go in and make enemies from those customers and don't get a chip on your shoulder after you've walked out of there because you might feel upset or offended or angry about something that they might be doing. Don't let that get you worked up on all of that. Sun Tzu once made the comment, know your enemy and know yourself and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. Get to know your competition. Understand what they do, why they typically do things. I, I, I will tell you that the small business in town that, that everybody knows is going to go on sale, their competition knows that. And they, they, and they know it and it happens 
and they compete against them regularly and consistently because they know how they do it and why they do it. And so they work the, comp the competition's business model into theirs. It becomes very easy for them to compete now because they're very easy to read and very easy to understand of what their next move is going to be. All right, let's go to the next one. We need to team up. We need to be joining forces with others who are in the exact same battle as we are. Go and find those who have opportunities to be able to purchase either in buying mark in, 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 in like cooperative buying, cooperative purchasing. Maybe you and another business locally are buying the same products. Maybe we're kind of semi, kind of sort of competitors. Can we co-op on some purchasing of products? Can we do some co-op of some advertising and put some dollars to, to maybe combine up on some marketing opportunities that are going to be there? Find opportunities to team up on uh, community events. Maybe you have an event going on or maybe you have a big sale going on that maybe a customer next door or down the street or around the corner, you could team up with and, and be able to build that up even more. Hey, come and buy dinner here and get 10% off your meal and we'll give you a coupon for 15% off with for ice cream at dessert two doors down. Or maybe they're promoting, hey, we'll give you 15% off our ice cream, go have dinner next door first and then come back over and they'll give you a coupon for, for dessert here afterwards. Uh, I see, uh, I, I've had some, some, some people who've, who've opened up businesses and wanted to implement food, but didn't have the ability of being able to create the commercial kitchen. So what they did was they opened their business. They have menus in their, in their, in their, um, in, in their business for close by restaurants or delis or fast food takeout. And they have it set up where the food is now being delivered to them and they're just consuming there in their business. An opportunity there for two businesses to be able to grow and to develop strictly by just trying to find those opportunities of being able to team up, to, to be able to team up together. So get out and know who your other small business owners are. Know who's out there, know what they're trying to do, visit with them, find out what their struggles are, Find out what they're find find out what they're doing that is successful, and then let's piggyback those together, and 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 try and make something more of this so that you're not fighting this battle alone. Do not feel alone in what you're trying to do. There are there are people surrounding you in your communities up and down Main Street wherever you are that are in this exact same fight. So don't feel like you're alone, and don't feel like you have to take it on all by yourself as well. And don't try to be a martyr. Don't try and go out there and make yourself look like this big struggle. Keep your head up and you keep pushing forward and you keep fighting the good fight and you keep finding those opportunities to succeed and you're going to be successful, but don't be the martyr. Don't try to sacrifice the business in the name of small business. Next one. And I could spend two hours on this topic all by itself. And this is, I want you to, to start to attract and take care of your employees. Now, what do I mean by take care? I want you to pay competitively, but it's not always about the money for your employees, all right? Richard Branson once said, take care of your employees and they will take care of your business. It's simple as that. I promise you that there are employees in your communities that want to work for a business where they are empowered to participate in that business, even though they may be able to get more money somewhere else. Take advantage of finding those kinds of people. Don't just try to win them over with the paycheck. Don't give them a reason to try and jump ship and go someplace else, but find opportunities to empower them. Treat them as your equals. Um, sometimes it's those simple things that mean the most. Um, that's gonna create this really positive dynamic. Um, Talk, talk to them like you, like you talk to anybody else, regardless of their position. Talk to them in the same tone of voice, 
we've all had that boss that talks to us a little bit differently than what others, than, or how others may, may talk to us. Talk to them how you want, how you would have wanted to be talked to as an employee. Um, don't, over, don't overthink it though. So just really what I'm saying is just be respectful to everybody on your staff. Ask them about their personal lives. Let them know that you care, that you're interested in those. Try to, try to know the names of the employees of your staff. Um, I'm sorry, try to know the names of, of their spouses. I'm sorry, it's probably good to, to know the name of your employees, but try to know the names of their spouses and their kids. That's gonna go a long way in establishing that relationship there to know that you care about them more than just as an employee and ask about their families as well so that they know that you care about them. Um, try, to vi try to provide them with some various benefits where, where, where possible. And it's not always about insurance or those kinds of things. Are there some opportunities that we can do? Are there some outside things that we can do that are fairly low cost or no cost that we can give to them as a benefit? Maybe it's discounts within our business. Maybe it's discounts at neighboring businesses, uh, whatever, whatever those types of things might be. The, another opportunity is maybe find opportunities for them to try to find and bring benefits to the business. Now they feel like they're now a participating member of a business who's trying to expand the the business culture for what's there and then listen to those ideas that they bring to you you'd be surprised how many ideas are in our employees heads and then when we listen to them and then find an opportunity to try and implement that or even take the time to research into it deeper we're going to find that they become much more engaged with us. You never know what the next, uh, what the next big idea is that's going to change your, your company for the better. It could come on from the person you least expect on your staff that can make this better. So find opportunities to engage with them and to get their thoughts and to get their input. Now here in Arizona, we know that, of course, we have a minimum wage that's a little bit higher than, 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 than nationally, but try to pay them what they deserve. If there's a chance for them to get a similar job that pays better, most people are gonna take it. But if we're paying them while they feel that they at least deserve to be paid, if another job may come along and the other benefits of being in this company that we've just talked about are there and they're gonna be greater than the other, we're at least competitive to the point where they now are taking a really strong look at staying with us. Now, again, you don't have to, to, to go crazy on this, but if it's, it's cheaper for us to, to retain an employee than it is for us to, re, to replace them. So find ways of being able to retain those employees in some way. Again, we always have to consider bottom line for the business. So we're, let, again, take a look at that where, where possible. A couple of other ideas here, and then, we'll, and then we'll move on to the next topic, is to acknowledge their successes aloud. Don't, not just, not acknowledge that to them, recognize them for what they're doing, but recognize that in front of other people. Odds are that there are lots of small victories that happen every single day. And, and, and it's important that when that happens, that you celebrate that with the team and help the team to understand that. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just acknowledging that moment out loud at the moment when it happens is more than enough to let your team know that you noticed their hard work. One of the things we talked about millennials earlier, um, one of the things that, that they look for in businesses is flexibility with working hours. Um, one of the common factors with all of our employees is that they, they have lives outside of business, outside of work. And sometimes it can get ugly and complicated outside of work, um, and, it, and it could have a, an effect with them negatively within our, within our businesses. Um, learn to be flexible with hours and, and, and giving some people some flexibility to go, to, to go and deal with those things when they need it. It will help keep them happy and healthy. It gives them the opportunity to be able to go and take care of that outside rather than being there at the business, fretting, stewing, worrying, not contributing, having a kind of a kind of a, of a of a cloud over the business that day if we can let them go and take care of some of those things and be flexible with those hours they will be quite appreciative and we'll be able to come back to the business again more committed as part of that and again 
don't forget about the small gestures for your employees. Every now and then, bring breakfast in every now and then, or shut down early on a day and still give them full pay for the day. Do that. I'm not saying do that a lot, but do it on occasion to let them know. Say, hey, guys, we've worked hard this week. Let's just shut things down today at noon. We're good to go. Go home. Enjoy your family. Start your weekend early. Every now and then, again, is more than enough to show them that you care about their happiness there. Now, all of these things add up. Find and pick and choose what's going to work best for you and your employees, and then try to implement some of those things so that we can take care of those um, that we want to keep and maintain. All right, next one. Another full hour topic here, super, super, is customer service. We cannot talk about customer service enough. And this is probably, if I had to talk about this, I would probably move this to the number one topic for competing against the big boys. And that is your customer service can and should always trump that of the big boxes. I want you to personalize your customer service to your customers and empower them, I'm sorry, and then empower your, your, your employees to do the exact same thing. Let them know where those, where those limitations are of what they can or what they can't do or what they shouldn't do as far as customer service goes. We don't want them just giving away free food all night long in the name of customer service. There needs to be some parameters there of how do we do that. Um, so this again, probably the most important way that you can stand out from the larger competition. You have the ability as a small business owner to develop a deeper, a stronger, a more personal relationship with your customers, again, than the big box can. And your customer service has to have as much value as any product or any service that you have. Your customers appreciate that service and they pursue relationships and they pursue experiences, not just in results. So if you can provide your customer that you know with a relationship that they cannot get at a big business, they're going to come to you first, even if it costs them a little bit more. Now we all know, again, we, I, asked this, I told you this earlier, all of us know that we shop at certain places regardless of the price, regardless if I'm gonna spend an extra $10 or $20 on jeans at this business than this business, I go here because of the service that I get. I'm willing to pay extra for the non-tangible. This is again, one of probably the largest areas that you can set yourself apart. Now, our last topic today is probably going to be the most difficult for you. And that is you're gonna to have to make some changes. We all know change is difficult. And I don't want you to just change in the name of change. There are many times we try and implement change within our business and organization just to say that we're making changes. But if the change does not benefit and grow the business, then don't make the change. There are some things that are inherent to that business that you are extremely successful because of. Those kinds of things we need to keep. Those are the kinds of things that people find comfort. Those are the kinds of things that people come to your store for. But if there are changes that we can make to improve, to enhance, to grow the business that will enhance the opportunities for customers now to come to us rather than going to the big box, is it, I don't know, we could, we could talk out what those, what those changes might be. As we've talked today, you might have recognized some of those changes that maybe you want to make. Maybe you've identified some changes that you need to make. Maybe there are some things we haven't even talked about today. But you need to prepare to make some changes if we expect to continue to, to compete with the big box, to the mega stores, the discount stores, with Amazon. Um, take advantage of what they're not doing and start to implement in some of those things into your business. Change hurts sometimes and it gets a little difficult. But when you make those changes, your customers are going to recognize that and they're going to see that. 
and they're going to start to see that you're working hard to make sure that you are still an important business that they need to be coming to. So identify what those are. Identify what some of those things are. Um, as an SBDC, our job is to help you try to implement those changes. So as you're going through this today, or if you have more questions about today, or things you want to discuss after the fact, or if you're going, Kevin, I'm, I, I really want to do this. I just don't know how it's going to fit within my model. Give us a call. If you're outside our area, if you're in Mojave, if you're in Yavapai, if you're in, 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 in northeastern Arizona, give us a call. We will get you in contact with someone in your area who does the exact same thing that we do here. Again, remember, our job is to help try to provide resources for you in ways that we can help you be successful and to grow those businesses. So before we wrap up here, I don't see any questions that came in um, while we were visiting. Um, we've got a couple of extra minutes left over here. If there's any questions, I'm more than happy to, um, to answer those. Thanks, Amy. We appreciate you coming and participating with us today. Um, hopefully you found some things that were of benefit to you and we will uh, um, hopefully see you again in some future, some future presentations there. So excellent. All right, well, we'll give you just another second or two. So again, just uh, while we're waiting for, uh, if there's any other questions that might come in um, as, we're ripe, as we're wrapping up, um, Janelle um, let me know and, and reminded me, I don't know why she needed to remind me this, we're going on spring, break, on spring break next week. And so um, there's a possibility that we are probably not gonna have this webinar put together for you is that the staff is all out of the office um, in the next just a little bit here. So. Um, it is likely that that is going to come out to you after spring break, um, which will be on March 23rd. Um, if you need that before then, feel free to email me at kevin at kevin.peck at eac.edu. I'll be happy to, to get that link out to you before then if needed. If not, we will get that to you as soon as we get back from spring break. Once again, everybody, thank you for participating with us today. It's been a pleasure to have you with us. Um, if there's anything that we can, again, do for you moving forward, we're happy to do that, and hopefully we will see you at the next webinar. Thanks again.